Hi, I'm Drew Fulton. I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Filming Florida's Behind the Lens. This week we're going to be talking about audio, and it's something that sound and audio recording is something I've never really thought about as a still photographer. But once I started to work with video, audio became such an important aspect of the work I do in the field. So what do I mean by audio? Well, take a minute and watch this clip of a little blue heron. You probably noticed in that clip, there really was, the audio was just plain awful and something that I would never use except in an example like this. We've got airboats in the background, there's some people talking, there's some sandhill cranes nearby that are totally blasting the audio meter over the top and it's, it's just awful. And what's interesting to me is while all that audio was going on at the location, what's in the frame and the story that's being told by the clip is a little blue heron hunting. And none of that audio helps tell that story. So when I'm in the field and I'm working with audio, I'm trying to figure out what the best way to tell the story is and how that audio can support the video. Because it's really amazing. You don't think about it, but audio has a huge impact on your visual experience and the, the total experience as you watch and experience a short film. So when I'm approaching audio, especially audio for video, I sort of divide it into two major categories. The first is where all you really need is ambient audio. It's a scene like the Little Blue Heron where nothing is really happening in the scene that requires specific audio. It's something that you just need some generic marsh sounds, some generic environmental sounds that help tell the story but don't overpower the image. The second category is specific sounds that match action. This can be, in my case, often it's a bird singing or um, you know, a splash in the water or something like that that is audio that matches a specific action. So in that last example of American Coots fighting, you really see how audio has to match. And in that case, I was recording what I call sync sound. And what that means is that I have both a camera and a microphone pointed exactly at the subject. And I'm recording audio and I'm also recording video at the same time. They match. Sometimes that isn't always the case. Like in that little blue heron clip you saw earlier, the sync sound in that is useless because there's airboats and people and other birds and it, it doesn't help this, that clip. So what do I do in those cases? In those cases I actually often throw away that sync sound and add in ambient recordings. And what I mean by that is I'm setting up a separate microphone at a different time, but hopefully at that same location, and recording sort of a general soundscape of the place. I'm getting environmental noises, maybe it's a little bit of wind through the trees, it's a bunch of bird songs, it might be frogs or, you know, really anything that's making noise in that environment. And that gives me a sample track that I can pull from as I'm creating clips where I don't have a specific audio action that really needs to be represented in the audio track. And a lot of what you'll, a lot of the pieces you're seeing in my nature profiles and other pieces have an ambient recording that is dropped throughout the whole track and that gives me a baseline to work on. Sometimes I'm mixing in the sync sound which will have specific audio action. Sometimes I'm just using that, that ambient track. It really depends on what's going on in each specific clip.
Now this brings us to a little bit of an ethical discussion, and that is if you're not recording audio of exactly what's happening, what are the ethics around that? And for me, I'm always trying to tell the story. And in some cases, the audio of that particular location doesn't advance the story itself. So I have to find a different location, or it even may just be a different time of day. I've worked where there's uh, construction equipment going, you know, business hours, and either right at dawn or right at dusk, you can get nice ambient, clean recordings without construction noise and still get some nice ambient recordings. So for me, it's always, how do I tell the story best, and what audio best represents the sound and furthers that story? I'm not trying to deceive the viewer. I'm trying to give the viewer the best experience while being truthful to the story. So that's all I've got this week. So this week, we sort of took a look at the conceptual side of audio recording for video. In the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at how we actually record those in the field. Next week, we'll look at sync sound and how I'm recording on camera or at least at the same time. And so join me next week as we, I take you behind the lens.